Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. It is a little after 8 in the morning on Sunday, September 10th. The traditional peak, the climatological peak of the hurricane season, and right on cue we have a major hurricane making landfall right now across the lower keys of Florida. And this is the radar out of Key West. The eye is just to the east of Key West here. There's the eye of Irma right here. This is the eye wall. Some of those reds that are showing up in there. Uh, very, very high wind storm surge coming in through the area. And it is just a very rough day, to say the least, down in the Keys, all the way up here across the southern peninsula, moving on over towards the southwest coast of Florida. Over in this area, the winds are offshore right now, and so any uh, surge is non-existent at the moment. But once Irma moves on up through here and these winds shift out uh, to the south, then the storm surge can really move in, and it's going to be a real big problem up there. I'll show you that in just a moment. Over in the Miami area, uh, strong onshore flow overall, uh, a few embedded thunderstorms here and there. I am in Miami at the moment, and it's been pretty windy. The power still on where I am near the airport, uh, so that's certainly good news. But the core of Irma down here, crossing the lower keys, and this will be heading in the general direction here of southwest Florida, and the core may very well stay offshore, but that onshore flow uh, likely to push a surge in, and even as it goes by up here and the winds switch around to the west and pushes all that ocean water directly on shore, uh, that's going to be an immense problem. And like I said, we're going to take a look at that. First of all, the five-day forecast. This has been a very, very difficult hurricane to predict. Uh, as most of you obviously remember, you know, there was a time when it looked like it could come up here and maybe eventually come into the Carolinas. Uh, there was a period where the European was showing it going offshore, uh, other models doing the same, and then they were more inland and maybe towards Savannah or Charleston, and then it started, you know, like with this northwestern jog, and now look where we are. It's in the lower keys, and it is forecast to move right along the west coast of Florida and then up towards the Big Bend area, putting Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg, Bradenton Beach, all the way up to Cedar Key, the Suwannee River area, and Suwannee proper, uh, St. Mark's, Florida, the Big Bend, you know, just Crystal River, not a good situation. And then finally, of course, this should die out over portions of the Deep South, uh, but it's going to bring a tremendous amount of rain and even the possibility of tornadoes. We're going to be dealing with Irma for several days to come. Um, so I want to go, let's see, where is it? This is it. I want to take a look at the storm surge uh, latest potential storm surge map from the Hurricane Center, and you can notice, even zoomed out here, there is some uh, indication from the modeling, and this gets updated every time there's an advisory, so it's going to be changeable. Look in here at all the different colors of red, or the expanse of red. you got to bear with me today. My brain is working overtime here. So let's zoom in, and we can see starting in southwest Florida, obviously through the Keys, looking at about 5 to 10 feet, which is happening now. But as Irma goes by uh, to the north-northwest with its core, uh, the onshore flow in that right front quadrant, and then as it goes by and you get, you know, so initially you're going to have the onshore flow like this, and then as it goes past, uh, let's say it works its way up this way, as it does that, then the winds come out of the west and pushes all that water directly on shore. And so some of the areas that I'm most concerned with would be Marco Island, and then certainly Naples up here, and then in the areas in Lee County, Cape Coral, Fort Myers up into Port Charlotte. Very high potential here for a storm surge of salt water greater than 9 feet. What about the Tampa Bay area, Clearwater, St. Petersburg? And these areas, anywhere from 6 to 9 feet, uh, depending on many, many factors. But the bottom line is you can see a great deal of the coastal areas here, right up against the bay, against Tampa Bay, the possibility of some substantial saltwater flooding above ground level 
is certainly there. And then you move up, you see Spring Hill over here, and then finally into the area near Homosassa Springs, and then up towards Cedar Key. Uh, just a terrible situation again after last year with Hermine. And this has to do, you know, this is going to be highly dependent on the track and the wind field and the intensity of Irma as it moves up into this area. But you can see lots of areas in nine feet plus uh, inundating. Now, a lot of this against the coastline, of course, is your estuarine marshy area, your intertidal basin, if you will. And then you get up towards St. Mark's, and this is where the track is really going to matter because if the core what's left of it by this time uh, and really I'm not so much worried about the core at this point being intact uh, the center of circulation if it makes landfall let's say up through here just to the east of St. Mark's which lies over in this area then this onshore flow and everything being pushed up here you know, we could be looking at some absolutely devastating storm surge values uh, along these areas in this part of the Big Bend in the Appalachian Bay. So you need to seriously leave if you're still down there. I know you did it last year, and you know Hermine was not as uh, bad storm surge-wise as we thought it could be for this area, but it certainly was for Cedar Key, setting a record. Um, so please take it seriously. And in terms of wind, you know we look at the forecast track. As this moves by, you know, maybe some hurricane force winds all along the peninsula from time to time. It just matters in terms of how the uh, rain bands set up. If we go back to the radar, I can show you what I mean by that. You know, any of these brighter colors in the rain bands usually indicate uh, stronger winds probably being brought down to the surface, whereas the darker greens and yellows, very heavy rain and some gusty winds, but it's these more vibrant colors in the radar return that we typically see experience tells us that's where the heavier rain and the gusty strong explosive downburst of wind can occur especially near the core so just keep that in mind um, anything else I wanted to point out to you before let's see so Jose is out here we gotta watch this closely right now it's moving away from all of the islands so that's great news looking at the five-day forecast <laughs> Kind of weird looking there because it's just going to come up and, you know, you pick the date and see if you get it right. Uh, but we need to watch this because it looks like once Irma comes up and mills around and dies out that uh, Jose could come around and, you know, do some loops. And then it might try to come back and we just have to see what the pattern is like near the mid-Atlantic states in the southeast. And even New England, you never know, in the Canadian Maritimes. Bottom line, Jose is on deck, unfortunately. So we need to keep an eye on that. I want to just point out the iPhone and the Android app both doing very well. We updated the Android app yesterday. And for a link to the latest version, please see my Twitter feed, okay? And let me just show you that real quick. As apparently it's not showing up in the store just by a search. So go uh, at Hurricane Track on Twitter. And I'm going to post the link here in just a minute, a direct link into the Google Play to the app. But in the App Store for Apple, uh, it's right there. It's called Hurricane Impact. This is a screenshot of my iPhone, in fact. And uh, it works best on an iPhone, not so much on an iPad. It wasn't developed for iPad. And it does work on, I don't know, 95% of the Android devices out there, the newest version. And if you get this app, you know, I'm asking you for just a few dollars. And then what you're going to get in return is stuff like this, the live Weather data, this is from Marathon, and I did a screen capture of this just a few minutes before I did this update, and a live streaming video image, or, or video, not an image, with audio. And I have several cameras set up. We have a uh, Marco Island uh, with a marker that shows you how high the water is, is getting once it gets there. We have one in Naples in a neighborhood, and we're going to set up more uh, along the coast. And yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. I forgot. We're going to set up more up here. Uh, let's just do this. Considering the threat here and the threat here, an ambitious goal as it may be, I'm going to get out of Miami, refuel in Orlando, and then we're going to set up a camera system in uh, Cedar Key, and then another camera system over here 
in St. Mark's. At least I know exactly where they're going to go based on what we did last year. And all of that feeds into our app. This is how we fund what we do, a part of how we do it. There's other funding methods, of course, but uh, this is a major part of it and it helps build our future so that we can work for you to bring, hopefully, very helpful hurricane information and live coverage like you cannot get anywhere else. In the teeth of the storm, we set this equipment up specifically for each of these events. Uh, and, you know, some are more successful than others, depending on track and intensity, daylight versus nighttime. But that's the app. It's called Hurricane Impact on the App Store, on Google Play. Check Twitter. I'll put both links to both versions for iOS and Android on my Twitter feed. All right, so that is it from me. This is basically hunker down time for folks in Florida. Uh, Zach Fredella, our colleague from New Orleans, will have a, another video discussion this afternoon around the 2 p.m. Inter intermediate advisory package. And uh, we will go from there, and he'll have another one this evening as well, um, probably at the 8 p.m. intermediate advisory package. That way, we have the latest storm surge forecasts set up, and we can show you that. All right? Again, I'm Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com in Miami, Florida. We will have continuing team coverage from either me or Zach or our cameras and weather stations throughout the next several days. Thanks for tuning in.